All right, so this is just about everything needed for the standardization phase of experiment 21. We've got an, a sample of about 0.2 grams of sodium carbonate there. You can see it's not terribly a lot, but uh, there's some solid in that uh, weigh boat there. Bromo cresol green indicator, a 250 mil flask, which is going to hold our analyte, the sodium carbonate with water, and then a burette with 50 milliliters of that 0.1 molar quote unquote hydrochloric acid solution in it. And uh, you'll want to fill this guy up all the way up to the zero mark uh, because you'll potentially be using a lot of this stuff in this standardization phase. The last bit of sodium carbonate out of the weigh boat with a little bit of DI water is no big deal. Remember that the volume of the water doesn't matter, so we're more than welcome to wash out this weigh boat to make sure that all the sodium carbonate makes its way into the flask. It's really important to make sure that it all makes its way in there so that your mass that you, of sodium carbonate that you measured is actually what makes its way into the flask. Now we'll add a few drops of bromo cresol green indicator. The indicator is blue when basic, when in a basic environment, so we should see a blue color develop and you'll want the blue color to be pretty pronounced. So I use seven drops there. Don't forget to tell students to record the number of drops that they use and indeed we can see that really nice blue color coming through. All right. All right, so we're just about ready to start the standardization. I've got the HCl on the zero mark. I've recorded that, recorded the number of drops and mass, uh, number of drops of bromocresol green and the mass of sodium carbonate. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn the stopcock until we get a nice steady drop flow there. And you'll want to swirl this around gently. Now to the side I've got a hot plate going already already heating up in anticipation of what's coming next which is heating to drive off the carbon dioxide that's dissolved in the water. Um, the dissolved carbon dioxide throws off the titration. Really it all has to be gone in order for the um, titration results to be accurate. So what we're going to do once we get to sort of a midpoint in the titration when we start noticing some of the other ionization state of the bromo cresol green coming in is we're going to heat this guy up and boil off the carbon dioxide that forms. So we can see now that the solutions kind of assumed a lighter greenish aqua color and this is a sign that it's time to start driving off the carbon dioxide that's in there. Once you've got the solution at a pretty steady boil, let it sit for about three to five minutes and then allow it to cool to room temperature before you resume the standardization. The color of bromo cresol green is temperature dependent and we want that color to reflect room temperature so make sure to let it cool before you jump back on the standardization. You may also at this point want to record how much volume of HCl you used in that first stage of the standardization because there's a chance you may need to fill the burette back up to the zero mark to resume the standardization. The endpoint of the standardization is yellow. The acidic form of bromocortisol green is yellow. So as soon as you see that solution turn yellow, you'll want to record the volume of HCl that you used. And we'll use that volume in conjunction with the mass of sodium carbonate that we measured, that we know is in the, uh, the analyte flask, to calculate the exact concentration of hydrochloric acid. And if you think about it, in principle, we can get as many significant figures in that concentration of hydrochloric acid as we got when we measured the mass of sodium carbonate originally. So you can see five significant figures right there, four if you're under, uh, under a gram. So we can get the concentration of hydrochloric acid that we used uh, in this standardization to a pretty good precision from this procedure.